everybody, I'm back. And uh, today we are going to review some of my clay creations, as I like to call this group. So we'll start simple, and I mean really simple. Uh, hold on, let me just separate the simple ones from the non-simple, bigger ones. Alright, we'll start with the smallest and the oldest. This is our, um, Hesperonis. So he could be, like, sitting on the edge, or, or maybe popping up for some air on the surface, or swallowing. And then this is him swimming. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Get a close view. Let me fix his neck. Yeah, the thing about this clay that I use these things for is that if they're in water for too long, then they kind of fall apart a little easy. But that's fine. Next up is our um, second oldest. This, um, so what I do with these babies is, um, so I pretend like that there's a mother of that species that's hatching an egg and then the egg hatches and then it's the baby starts out small but then i keep adding more cl and more clay to make it bigger so this is what this um little tropignathus looks like now i don't know where the mother tropignathus lives or is i mean <laughs> not lives but yeah simple small sort of and the the next least recent but still very recent i made this a couple days ago this is a baby parrot where i did the same thing i've only added to it two times though or one time so it started out a little smaller than this then i found a piece of a tail to something that I don't know what it was, so I decided to add it to it. Little baby para. Not much else to say. Yeah, these are really simple. They're just kind of big green blobs that are shaped like this. Next one, the most recent, is the... I found this is a big ball of clay lying around this is a little Dryosaurus slash whatever you want it to be, Micropachycephalosaurus. One of those small ornithopods, something. I'm sorry there's always a shadow on my eye. For some reason, the angle of the light is kind of bad. Yeah. Anyway, there. Not much else to say. Now let's move on to the bigger ones. Actually, we have one more tiny one. And his tail fell off. Hold on. Just a second. Just a second. Alright. There we go. This guy is the Dimorphodon. You could... So we can... And the great thing about this clay is it... Unless you, like, cook it or something, it, it doesn't actually dry. So you could keep flexing it and moving it and changing it. Like, what I do with these guys is, so, um, when I find some clay to add to it... <coughs> sorry, guys, I have a bad cough. But when I found some clay to add to it, I can just ball it up, add the clay to it, rotate it around a little, smush it together, and then, um, make, make the shape again. So yeah, this is Dimorphodon. Got little stubs that you can land on. Yeah. Now let's move on to the big boys. Okay, we'll start, we'll start in the ocean. This guy, I think, is the Chronosaur. Um, yeah. Um, his... These ones I actually did detail on. These guys are really good. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't really have much to say about these. I'm just kind of 
sticking them in front of the camera on YouTube. Um, yeah. Um, in a way, sometimes that I um, straighten out the tail while actually shortening it a little is um, I poke off a little bit of clay. And if I think then it's too short, then I can just kind of stretch it out a little. Yeah. So this is my Dolly Rangtrops, which is, um, he actually has a symbiotic relationship with the, um, Hesper. So like that, symbiotic. Yeah, this guy is, I think what I did with almost every aquatic, except for the Mosasaur, which for some reason lost its head, and this guy, um, the the underbelly is yellow as you can see here next we have the um biggest one probably other than the mosasaur which i didn't bring because it lost its head um let me fix the neck and the head i tried to change the head or a little a couple days ago and then i just got lazy and decided to stop but there we go this is the plesiosaur and he's still got a crack in his neck hold on guys you can watch me at work so this guy is the elasmosaur <coughs> i'm probably gonna cut the parts where i call out <coughs> like that and anyway, this guy, pretty simple, pretty simple, yeah, that's all I have to say, yellow belly, blue, cool looking eyes, why does it never focus when I want it to? Next up, we're moving on to land, starting with the, this used to be a Mementi source, but then I, um, I changed the tail into a Diplodocus, and for some reason, its other eye is on its chin, that's kind of weird, okay, <coughs> here's a scale from far away, hold on, actually, let me shorten the neck a little, and lengthen the tail. Is lengthen even a word? I don't know. Okay, I was trying to just chip a little off like I was talking about earlier. But apparently there was a big crack somewhere. All right, there we go. And what I like about this guy is the pose it's in. It could be like reaching up for a tree. Like that. Look at that. <laughs> Next up is the, um, probably the most, or, yeah, probably most, or second most, maybe, recent out of all of these. Um, this guy used to be a tanny strophius, but he looked horrible, so I changed it into a Camarasaurus. Yeah. Um, da -da -dum -bum -dum -hum -hum -hum. um, actually, the Tanny Strophius used to be a Saltosaurus, so then I changed him into a, a Tanny Strophius, um, and then after a while I changed him into the Camarasaur with the big fat head. If this guy was real, he'd be like this. Just walking around with his head on the ground. Okay, I did not mean to rhyme there. Next up, this guy also used to be a patasaurus that had a really cool little red pattern. This is the no-eyed. Um, I'm going to let you guess in three, two, one. It's a margosaurus. 
I almost forgot the name of it there. <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't do much deep. I don't do much detail on these. But anyway, here's the most recent. <coughs> so what I did with this guy was this. The orange used to be a Pachycephalosaurus, but I changed him into a Sauropelta, and I found a little Jurassic World Ankylosaur toy. So that's what I did with the texture. And I didn't have enough, enough clay for the head, so um, I took some off of um, something else and put it on this. Yeah, that's sometimes what I do. I, I even had two little dinosaur toys that I completely covered in clay to color them and give them better looking skin and stuff. One was actually a skeleton brachiosaur that I had on my birthday cake a long, long time ago. And another one was a red T-Rex toy that, with black and blue polka dots. Anyway, so here's a full view of the Sauropelta. To a full spin. So this guy used this long tail that doesn't have a club. Um, as a whip, kind of like the Plodocus. Yeah. Um, and here is a pretty recent one. This isn't actually clay. This, actually, it was made of clay, although it's painted. And this was an air dry clay, a different clay. Or maybe this was a clay, the type of clay you cook, but... Anyway, here it is. This is the, um, or this is a Stracosaur I made. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So, you can see it has a red crown there. Crest. Frill, I mean. With black lines connecting this black top of the head to all the spikes. Which are in fact grayish, I would think. Um, you can barely see the eyes, so that's kind of fine. He's got blue lightning bolt kind of shaped stripes on the front. And the back, they turn into black. And then on the hips. I'm doing a video! Get out of here! On the hips, there is um, black dots. And then the underbelly is yellow. So, yeah, that's my collection of clay animals. and I mean, dinosaurs and prehistoric animals. And this guy, the Styracosaurus. Oh, also he has uh, black ankles. Yeah. Oh, and there's a couple spots I didn't paint on him, like there paint got scratched off there and yeah so he's a little incomplete but he is fine <coughs> yeah. so yeah that's this guy now there's something i want you to do because the last time i checked which was a long time ago I only had this many subscribers. I might have more now, but subscribe, okay? Subscribe, subscribe. Oh my gosh, that red is not editing. Oh my gosh, how did I do that? Subscribe. I don't know how I'm turning red. Anyway, bye. Subscribe.